I cannot wait to transfer my iPad drawings onto this canvas so much faster now. Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me in this Art Vlogmas Day 8. We are on time today and I couldn't feel any happier and refreshed from taking that editing break. Let's get started. So this morning, I took time to record the commission that I'm currently working on. If you guys like to see more of those in my process for digital portraits, please let me know. I'd be happy to share my work, but I'm not sure if anyone would find it interesting enough. But since this is Art Vlogmas, you're seeing everything art related that I do for the day. This portrait specifically is of a wedding photo. The photo is pretty blurry, but my main concern is getting the shapes, proportions, and pose correct of the photo. Then later on when it's time to render and really hone in on the likeness, then I like to rely on multiple photos for references. Reason being because we don't look the same in all our photos. Different lighting makes a big difference and since I don't actually know about 90% of the people that I'm painting, I want to make sure that I have multiple photos to have a better idea of what they might look like in person. If you're trying to get into portrait commissions, that would be one of my biggest tips for you. I've done quite a few portraits. I feel like I've done maybe at least 50 or more. I feel myself getting better and better with each one. I'm constantly playing with brushes so that I can find which ones I like the most. And recently I've really, really, really been enjoying the Plimsoil brush. It kind of gives the portrait a more traditional feel, like as if it were on canvas. I just really like this brush, but there's definitely way more that I want to play around with. I'm working on Procreate but I really want to switch to Art Rage instead of Procreate because the oil brush is absolutely on point. It's, um, I was introduced to Art Rage by one of my favorite artists called Ali Ganza. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, she uses it and I found it through her. The only problem I have with Art Rage for my commissions is that it's not very good for printing large, at least through the iPad. I think for a computer, then you can, you have more options to make it bigger. I have to figure out that bug before I make the switch because I don't have a computer. I rely on my iPad to do all of my digital portraits. But besides that, I got into making portrait commissions sometime, I want to say, in 2018. I asked for a few friends and families to volunteer their children's or pets for me to make samples of the different kinds of commissions that I wanted to do. And it's been going on ever since then and it's been going pretty well and hopefully it keeps going well. Yeah, I really like digital portraits because when you do portraits digitally, you're really only counting the printing materials and the amount of hours that you put into the portrait as opposed to painting by hand and then you would have to also include not only the time that you're putting into the painting but the time it's going to take for the painting to dry um then you also have to consider all the supplies that you're using into this painting so for me digital was just a lot better and I don't have to worry about the paint being the portrait being ruined because of XYZ who knows you know what what could happen so that's why most of my commissions are digital I do take hand painted commissions but those take a lot longer to make and they are a lot more expensive so most people just opt for these digital ones plus shipping is much easier too because you can roll it up and the longevity of this you can have it for a really 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 long time i can print up to 24 by 36 inches and i've just recently started to also print on canvas so i'll still do the portrait digitally but then i'll be able to print it on canvas either way i like my portraits to even though it's digital i like it to have a traditional feel so i'm constantly looking for traditional feeling brushes on procreate So yeah, like I said, you're seeing the process here. Um, the way I like to start is I work by sections. So as you can see, I had the, I started working on the one section with her eye. The reason why I do this, and this is just 
for me, this is how I prefer to work, is because I like to take breaks in between. And what I mean by that is I'll work on one side of the face and then I'll take a break from working on that side of the face. I'll move on to another side of the face and it, this gives me an opportunity to step back and look at the other side with a fresh eye. If you're working on something for too long, then you can really overwork the painting or portrait, whether it be digitally or in real life. At least in my opinion, that can easily happen in digital painting too. You start rendering too much, something that's not even gonna really show up when you print it out. So it's really important, at least for me, to take those breaks from each side of the face. So I started working on her eye and then I moved on to her hair. But basically, long story short, I just like to work in sections as opposed to the entire painting. When I'm working on commissions, I generally like to work on just the whole at first. You know, the, some, some of the obvious shadows that I see, I like to put down. But so far, this is the way I've been working on my digital portraits. This is why I'm really excited to take the class, is because I feel like I'm taking too much time on my portraits. And I feel like this is because there are easier ways to approach a painting. This is my process and I feel like my process could easily be cut in half if I learned how to paint correctly or traditionally like mentored in some way. And that's what I mean by I just want to get the feedback on the technical aspect because I haven't had a person tell me that they don't like the portrait that I gave them. And I don't, I mean, I guess it's because people wouldn't be rude like that, right? I mean, you would expect someone, but I always expect honest feedback. So the way I do my commissions is I send them the first draft, I guess you can say, and then we go from there. So I send them the first finished portrait and then if they like it, they tell me it's good to go. We can print it out. If there's something off, which I always expect someone to tell me if something is off, like if the eye doesn't look right or maybe in the photo it shows that they have brown eyes but really they have blue eyes, there just wasn't enough light or something, you know? Like I expect to be told honestly what needs to be fixed and every time i'm told this needs to be worked on a little bit more it helps me it helps me see the next portrait that i get a little bit better but you know that's just how i normally that's just what i normally do i've always loved doing portraits ever since i was younger ever since i started my my love for art ever since i was little i've just always enjoyed making portraits or just pretty much anything with realism i just found there's something so fascinating with being able to repli replicate a photo or replicate you know something from life so yeah that's how i got into making portrait commissions and I absolutely love it and I hope I get to do many 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 more but besides that today I really didn't do much art I was only able to work on my commission a little bit and that's because my daughter really wanted me to watch Cinderella with her so I just said okay I worked on this commission for about 40 minutes and then I went to go watch Cinderella with her but then something exciting really happened during nap time. So remember I showed you my failed Inktober sketchbook and I mentioned there were a few pieces on there that I really, really wanted to transfer to Canvas. Well, on Monday I went on Amazon and I bought a projector. This projector connects to my iPad which will let me project any of my Procreate sketches to a canvas so that I can trace it. I had a little bit of trouble setting it up and trying to figure it all out, but once I got it to work, I was so beyond happy and excited for this because if you paint big, you know how annoying it can be to draw up a sketch and then try to copy that same sketch on canvas. Nine out of ten times, the sketch is always better. Or if you try to sketch directly on the canvas, because you're a brave soul, it can take forever to draw in that space and then having to step back every two minutes to make sure it looks right can just get really annoying. And on top of that, having to try to correct it if it doesn't look right just makes it even more annoying. 
It just makes much more sense to draw small on an iPad screen and then just project the image over. It really does. Now, I feel like I'm going to be taking on way too many big paintings now because I'm going to be loving every minute of it, starting with my vessel prompt of this vampire lady. I can't wait to share the steps with you and show you videos of her coming to life. Hopefully she's done by the end of Vlogmas, I don't know. Usually when I work on a painting for too long, I end up not finishing it and it gets stuck in my closet with all my other unfinished canvases that probably hate me. But also, I'm planning on painting two canvases as gifts for my cousins, so those you will definitely be seeing. I don't think they watch my channel, I don't think they even know that I have a YouTube, so I'm sure I wouldn't be ruining any surprise by showing you guys the time lapses or me painting. Plus it's Vlogmas, so I've got to show you. And yeah, this is how she ended up turning out. I absolutely love it, I can't wait to get started. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!